2014, you know, I think uh, M&A activity might really actually surprise us and we might see a major uptick in the, the number of deals uh, coming forward. I think that's for a, for a number of reasons, but probably one of the main ones is that most of the major uncertainties that we've seen in the economy have now, uh, major risks have really now faded somewhat and there's a lot more confidence when we're talking to all of our clients about their future plans. So I think a lot of companies now are looking strategically at their portfolios um, to really challenge themselves as to how they grow in the future, you know, to, to add value to, to their businesses. And clearly you've got a couple of routes to grow. You can grow organically, but also you can grow through M&A. But equally, you need to really focus on certain parts of your business strategically. Um, because you can't do everything, and if you um, focus on everything, then essentially you're not focusing on, on anything. So I think mergers and acquisitions will be an attractive uh, proposition uh, for a number of companies to grow strategically, and most of the, the major risks are, are now out of the way. In terms of growing organically, companies uh, now are finding that actually uh, the capital costs of building, particularly in certain markets such as the U.S., where we've got such strong activity uh, with, with all the shale gas and lower feedstock costs. The capital costs now are accelerating. Um, and that means that a lot of companies are perhaps pulling back from um, growing organically and M&A activity would be an, an alternative for them to grow their businesses. Equally, Companies are looking to expand globally, companies that have generated a lot of cash from having low cost feedstocks. And one of the ways they can do that again is through mergers and acquisitions, potentially to buy into a, an end use market, um, which they're not in already as a market entry mechanism, but maybe also to get their hands on particular technology uh, or supply chain uh, advantage. So those are really uh, the main reasons I think that we could really see a big surprise in the uh, level of M&A activity in 2014. You know, the type of buyers that we're going to see are perhaps going to be much more strategic uh, than private equity. Uh, there are really a couple of reasons for this. Um, in terms of private equity, you know, that private equity companies are really trying to, to buy assets uh, at the bottom of the cycle. And if you look at all of our forecasts and expectations for 2014, 15 and 16, we are forecasting an uptick in margins around the world as growth comes back into economies, uh, demand increases, and there has been a, a pause in, in people building assets um, during the, the recent downtime. So I think for private equity, the, the cycle timing is perhaps not right for, for major plays. I think private equity might buy smaller companies uh, which fit, within a, uh, fit with other assets that they already own if they do do deals and we've seen some of those uh, in 2013. So the strategic um, buyers I think will, uh, will really come into the market as I said, said before because you know, some of them have got a lot of cash from having been producing um, from low cost uh, feedstocks. Um, but also they will want to gain access to technology and also into markets that are already producing in. So I think in 2014 and 15, we will probably see a shift in, in the balance to, to much more strategic buyers rather than the private equity. Yes, geographically, uh, I think we're going to see quite a difference uh, potentially. Um, if you look in uh, North America, clearly a lot of producers have now got a, a significant uh, cost advantage in, in that market. And so um, people coming into North America will try and get some of that action, if you like. Um, in Europe, you, we've still got a market that is really struggling. You know, costs are significantly higher. Uh, so I think we'll see some uh, companies trying to get out of certain market segments. And those products that they're selling or businesses they're selling could actually be very useful um, to companies that are in the Middle East or, or in Asia in terms of those uh, buyers getting access to technology um, or to market, market knowledge or product, product is good products um, to expand their businesses in, in other regions. Um, 
In Asia, I think everybody's looking at Asia in terms of you know, the huge increase in end-use demand for products. And uh, producers who are sitting with assets just in North America or the Middle East you know, will want, be wanting to get into the much faster growing uh, Asian markets. And so we'll be looking to, to buy assets uh, in, in Asia. Thank <laughs> you.